libraries are welcoming readers once again in Idaho, but checking out books will look a little different now. Spokane County has seen an increase of COVID-19 cases, and this morning we learn how the county fares against other cities across eastern Washington. Well, you know him as the TikTok doc. He is known for spreading joy amid the pandemic. And now he's standing up for Black Lives Matter protests across the nation. And take a look outside, foggy skies and showers as we kick off your Tuesday morning. We'll talk about when we see some dry weather and sunny skies on the way. Up with Krim begins now. Happy Tuesday morning. Thank you for joining us here on Up with Krem. Washington Representative Matt Shea continues to push a bill to create the so-called 51st state, which would separate Washington into two states, and then the line would be drawn at the Cascade Mountain Range. This morning, we want you to join in the conversation. Do you think Eastern Washington should be its own state? You can vote on our Krem2 mobile app or on krem.com slash vote. And coming up in just a few minutes, we will check in with our own Dana Marie McNichol for the latest on why Shea is pushing for this new state as part of a conversation that is years and years old. We do want to let you know while we have that poll up right now, we have, last I checked, we have all about 500 people, Jen, who have voted in on that poll, and it's pretty close to down the middle, but the slight majority goes to the yes vote. Yeah, we're starting to see that level out as we get into the later portions of our program. Of course, not a new debate here in Washington, a, a bit of a divide on either side of the cascade. So definitely weigh in this morning. I know a lot of you already have, but definitely want to still hear from you this morning. Yeah, and if you're looking for a little more information on the story, we will check in with Dana Marie to fill us in coming up here in just a little bit. But we do want to take a live look outside this morning on your Tuesday. Boy, what a grimy, murky start it is out there. But temperatures, of course, expected to remain mild today. It's a bit of a warm front, though, coming up on the way. Evan, that's a little bit different from what we've seen over the last few days, right? Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> we are definitely welcoming the possibility of 80 degree temperatures and sunny skies expected into the weekend, but we do have to get through today and tomorrow before that warm up really begins. Uh, outside, satellite radar view has shown showers, and uh, we earlier saw that view of the fog over Lake Coeur d'Alene, so uh, things are a uh, little bit limited in terms of visibility as we kick off the day. A little bit of a closer look at Spokane and Spokane County area shows you where those showers are located, pushing farther off to the north and to the east. So Kootenai County picking up on some of those showers. And then as you move farther north around the Loon Lake area and uh, Sandpoint, we're still seeing plenty of active weather persist. So what do we have into the next several hours? Well, uh, although central Washington and eastern Washington, we're seeing most of those showers taper off. We're not going to see temperatures warm up by all that much. We're hoping for maybe 62 degrees is that forecast high coming between about 6 and 7 p.m. maybe or 5 and 6 p.m. Uh, but otherwise, we are still sticking to those 10, 15 degree below normal temperatures that we've been seeing for the last several days. Uh, tomorrow, we start to make our way to the upper 60s. And then by Thursday, Friday and Saturday, we're talking upper 70s and even 80s possible. So a uh, welcome sight once uh, the weekend comes about. And that also is your summer weekend, the official start of the summer season and your Father's Day weekend. So uh, it's exciting for anyone who has plans. Here's the view outside. We're going to check up on your traffic, which right now shows plenty of people on I-9. Uh, looks like roads are starting to dry out a bit, so that's good news for that morning commute along with some of that fog that has lifted. Uh, but continue to take it slow if you see any uh, limited visibility around the region. We'll keep you updated on if we see any backups or delays on the roads. 734 right now. Jen, I'll send things over to you. All right, Evan, thank you so much. We are tracking breaking news this morning. Honor flight is canceled for the rest of the year. The organization flies veterans all over the country to visit war memorials in Washington, D.C. The Inland Northwest Honor Flight made the announcement this morning. According to the organization, all veterans scheduled for the April 2020 flight will be called first for the next available flight. Honor Flight leaders say they are already looking to plan spring 2021 dates and hoping to book those dates soon. And here are three things to know this morning across the Inland Northwest. Libraries in the North Idaho Community Library Network are now open. 
It is part of Phase 4 of Idaho's reopening plan. The Community Library Network is comprised of seven libraries across Kootenai and Shoshone counties. Library staff are required to wear a face mask, and face coverings are not mandatory for members of the public. While the FDA withdrew its emergency use authorization of hydroxychloroquine, it was first issued in March for hospitalized COVID-19 patients. President Trump also touted it for COVID-19 treatment. The FDA now says the drug carries too many risks without any apparent benefit. Well, this morning there is no date set for when Spokane County will move into Phase 3 of reopening. Right now, the county remains in Phase 2. Dr. Bob Lutz with the Spokane Regional Health District says he will not support moving into Phase 3 of reopening. Dr. Lutz says there have been too many new COVID-19 cases since Memorial Day weekend to move forward. And that's a quick look at your headlines here on our Tuesday morning. For now, we'll send things back to Joshua Robinson in studio. Yeah, thank you very much, Jen. We're going to continue that conversation surrounding the coronavirus in Spokane County after new data out of the Washington State Department of Health also raised its own concerns about an increase of coronavirus activity statewide. The report specifically calls out counties that include Spokane, Franklin, Benton, and Yakima for what they call increased rates of infection. State health leaders say that they are worried that the coronavirus could spread dramatically throughout these named counties. So we want to take a look closely by the numbers. Let's start with Spokane with numbers that we have turned to you before coming out of the Spokane Regional Health District. What I did here is I separated these green bars representing phase one of the statewide reopening plan and these light blue numbers representing the move into phase two. So it would make sense that we would see that increase that comes once we go into phase two. And it's worth noting that aside from this this day, where there were 55 new cases reported about 11 days ago, we have seen the gradual move kind of going back downward in terms of confirmed cases, all of which are under 25 per day. Let's also look at the 14 day moving average, which we have turned to plenty of times before here on up with Krem. Basically what we want to see as we look at this, we're looking at this green line here. We want to see it kind of level out. This is the flattening the curve model. Basically state and local health leaders are going to watch to make sure it will head down. Right now it's kind of fluctuating around that 20 mark. Now, if we look to the Tri-Cities area, because Franklin and Benton counties were also singled out in that state report, what I did is I combined the data from those two counties to get a better idea of how that region is faring. And what I did here is I stacked it up next to Spokane. So we can see Spokane represented in the greenish blue and the Benton Franklin counties represented in orange. There are similar motions here. You can kind of see movements in the same kind of wave, but there are dramatic peaks and valleys in the Benton and Franklin counties region compared to Spokane, which does mean that that region right now is much more inconsistent. As we look closer at those numbers, we're going to look again at that moving 14 day average, and we can see that the case numbers basically have been on the rise over the last few weeks. And they're just now starting to get to that point where they could maybe begin to level out. The curve needs to kind of hit that level, stop, flatten out, and then drop. So yes, very different stories comparing eastern and central Washington. But these are both areas that state health leaders say they're keeping a close eye on as we move forward because they want to make sure that the coronavirus is not spreading, but that it is slowing before any move to the next phase could even be part of the discussion. All right, time now to check in with our own Dana Marie McNichol this morning for our Tuesday morning look at what's trending. Good morning, Dana Marie. Good morning, Joshua. Well, we're looking at the idea of splitting Washington into two separate states. It's not a new idea. Back in January 2019, Matt Shea was one representative to introduce a bill to create the so-called 51st state, and today he continues to push for that. So we're asking you if you think Washington should be split into two. 55% of you are saying yes this morning compared to 45, almost split right down the middle. And I do want to mention um, just over 500 people have voted this morning. So a lot of you have joined our conversation. Now at a Liberate America event over the weekend in Coeur d'Alene, Matt Shea vowed to get a 51st state on the ballot this November, which includes every county in eastern Washington with the dividing line at the Cascade Mountain Range. He also suggested that every county in North Idaho, north of the Salmon River, 
could also be included. Now, Shea was formally stripped of his committee assignments and expelled from the House Republican Caucus after a private investigation released in December 2019 found that he had planned or engaged in an act of domestic terrorism against the United States. Now, while he hasn't filed to run for his seat again, he did indicate that he will run for a spot as a Republican precinct captain, which usually helps political parties connect with people in their neighborhood. So with this conversation resurfacing this morning, we do want to think, uh, ask you to join our conversation. Should Washington be split in two? Again, 56% of you this morning are saying yes, compared to 44% saying no. Um, as my Up With Crumb team joins me, this isn't the first time we've talked about this on our show. We've done this poll, I want to say about four or five months ago. Uh, and again, it's, it's pretty much split down the middle. Right, Joshua? Yeah, and what's interesting is I was just checking the numbers on our last check. We had about 570 people who have voted in this poll. So as those numbers increase, Jen, it's almost like we're seeing it start to balance out a little bit more and get closer to that 50-50 mark. Yeah, as with almost every poll I feel like we take these days, it's really split down the middle. Of course, not a new debate for the Liberty State. Uh, of course, that's just something I guess we'll have to wait and see if it gets enough support to even get on a ballot uh, for voters to decide. And of course, Evan, very different sort of weather patterns that are on either side of the Cascades too, right? Oh yeah, I mean, we know what that snow is like when they get an inch of snow over on the west side, <laughs> all things go into a frenzy. Right. But I like what Jen mentioned, how a lot of these just balance out to that 50-50 level. It, it, I enjoy often seeing when these polls are split down the middle because it reminds me of the diversity of opinions on both sides mm -hmm. and that these are still issues that a lot of residents in all areas are trying to figure out themselves. So uh, interesting that we pose those kinds of questions. And, and cool there's still see. plenty of time for you to vote throughout the morning. We'll keep it going here on Up With Krim. But still to come this morning, you might recognize him from his dance moves on TikTok. Well, Dr. Jason Campbell brought us some levity while fighting a pandemic. But after the break, why he is bringing us his truth as the country faces another crisis.